Ah, didn't say that, it's me, Thomas Edwards, also known as T.E. And welcome to Ribblehead Station. It's a, it's a bit blustery today, but it's, it's a perfect T.E. day for a bit of, bit of an explore. Oh look, there's a ground frame over there. It was controlled by Bleemore, and that's where we're going today. Right, we're just coming down front station up there, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, Batty Moss, or, or commonly known today as Ribblehead Viaduct, and it's 24 arches. And as you can see, there's a bit of lights and a few vans over there. They have actually a bit of showbiz happening. Me and the cameraman were just discussing it could be the bay because there's a police car down there. Maybe it could be the bay. And there's lots of guys with high vis around, sort of just officials kind of thing. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna sort of go to where that guy is in the high vis, and then go up, up onto Moss and uh, that's, uh, that's Wernside up there and we're going to walk up there and get to up to signal box and uh, show you something uh, dead exciting. The old plate layers up on the factory there, looks quite good, still got a tin roof on. Just got stopped and weren't allowed to come up here by a guy in the, the high vis like me. Oh, he can't come past here lads because he'll ruin the shot and the cameraman just said, oh, it's a public footpath, you know, what are you going to do? And we carried on and anyway, we'll come to, we'll come to see something very special and we need to go and see it. Oh, there's a little gate here. Oh, that way. And that over there is Ingleby behind me. Right. We're nearly there, I can see the home signal, we're nearly there. There's a tail lamp camera up there. This is a Bleemore Loops here, and that's so the signalman can see that at the end of the train, what's gone in the loop, he's got his tail lamp and he's not obviously uh, obstructing the, the main line. What, uh, originally, it was just to have the man to go and see that. Oh, there's a, there's a Range Rover Sport coming. This is a clue of uh, what we're going to look at today. One of my patrons said that uh, uh, this would be the right place for you. That's another clue. But you could have your dream vehicle, and that's a, that's a Land Rover or a Range Rover. I'd have a Range Rover Classic, but uh, this is a clue. So uh, there you go. Get up here in your 4x4. Oh, here it is. Is this one of the remotest properties in uh, in England? So here it is. This is the most remotest property in England, and uh, it's next to Bleemore Box. And it's because it's right next to it because the signalman would have had his own house next to the box because it was so remote. Now we'd have got to come up in a car up here, already parked on the bottom, and walk up. I can smell a bit of curry. I think he's just had his curry delivered by that Range Rover. So this house a few years ago, about ten, going back ten years ago, I came up here with uh, Sam Morris, and we uh, we walked up here because I said Sam, there's a great house up here. A guy still lives in it, and it's covered in junk. But all the side of it, he had a Haglung vehicle and just loads of stuff everywhere. It was a proper sort of wild house. Uh, but now, obviously, he's probably he's probably passed on. or he's gone. He's moved on, and it's for sale on Right Move as we speak. In uh, July, well, it's August now, August 2022. It's 300,000, and me and the cameraman actually could, as we speak, sell up and get this. It's in the right price range, and uh, it's actually very wild. I love a wild property. I could come up here and actually one of my patrons was saying down there sent it the same time I saw it it's oh yeah it looks good doesn't it that? but he, he had loads of stuff on there and it's, it looks like it's had actually buildings originally on the side and so he had an outside bog in there 
originally, but it's it needs a lot of work and it's, it's had a, someone smash the windows in the back, you can't trust anyone these days. So obviously this is on a main public footpath, I can see someone walking across now, all along here, you know, you'd, in this height of summer you'd have a lot of people walking past. But on right move, they're trying to sell it as an Airbnb, someone to do it up, make it into a holiday cottage, so you'd park down there or wherever you drive up and you get to it, or they walk past it and stay the night. And I think that's a shame because a lovely house, a lovely property, in the middle of nowhere, and locals can't get houses. And anyone, someone in Ingleton who's in a small flat or further afield in Lancaster in a, a small flat or someone who's actually on the, the register to get into a council house, something like that, live in here very happily and enjoy it. You know, but the, the thing is, there's so many people out there who want that all the time, all the time they want that. And it will be turned into some holiday cottage and some guy will have it and he'll be down in Kent somewhere and he'll rent it out and he won't have nothing to do with it except you pay him money, what it, oh yeah, it's a lot of money for a week. Not, it's not as cheap as I got that cottage in uh, near Ripon the other day, but it'd be a lot of money and he'd, he wouldn't have nothing to do with it and he'd send up some cleaners. He would have local cleaners cleaning it out, but there again, it's, it's not giving back to the local community and I love giving back to the local community and that's what should happen. In six months time, I could be walking out that door there and he could be going, oh, Thomas Edward's moved into it. It could happen, but you never know. It might not. I might find something even better, but uh, I'd have to get a trailer, a Land Rover, a Range Rover Classic with a trailer on to transport some of our classic cars out when we do shows. And some guy would go past and go, how does that, how does that belong up there? And we'd be trailing them out to, to do classic car shows. But, uh, there you go, it's, it's, it's here and it's on the market as we speak on the right move for £300,000. And as you can see in the photos, as I've talked over this, it needs a bit of work and there's a few big holes in the, in the, in the, in the floorboard and it's, it's probably got a few rolling rats in there and a few mice and, the, and bats and so on but uh, it's a, it could be a great house and we could get a garage on there or something and even I'd, uh, I'd even if we even lived there we could maybe sell a few teas I'll do that a few teas to walk you know and they could come and sit and have some goat's milk you know have a few goats around because you always ever buy a house in the rural wilderness always buy a goat because don't need a lawnmower, you can just keep everything down and we, you can use it, its milk for cheese and you can make soap out of it and it can do the whole shebang with tea, it'd be tea's goat, you'd be like whoa, we can have it on the postcard with me posing with it, anyway but uh, yeah so we've come up to Bleemore and this is the house and it's actually got swallows uh, nesting in the uh, gutters, you can just see them flying in, that one I didn't fly in but they are flying in, soon they'll be emigrating and disappearing, a lot they're just going in there but you can see it's got four chimneys on it so it's probably got it's probably got a fire in the front room, maybe in the back room or, or, or kitchen or front room being the parlour and it probably might have a, t a couple of fireplaces upstairs in, in the bedrooms but you can see it's been quite modernised in the last 20 years, 15 years because it's got double glazing on the front but around the sides and the back it's single pane and it's got two doors on the front as well what's interesting but I should say when this, when this uh, house first got built it had no water Nothing for toilets, nothing. You couldn't, you couldn't have a scrub a dub dub of tea in there when it first built. So uh, a class 40 would turn up with a load of jerry cans and drop them off in the sidings so the house could survive on a, a bit of water. I've, uh, I've lived on similar occasions like that, going out and getting water. That's nothing new to me, that. So, uh, But obviously now I think it's actually plumbed in. So that's a, that's a Brucey bonus, that is. It's plumbed in. Right, there you have it. If you want a house for 300,000, get on right move and get yourself a pad. And if you don't want it, but you want to buy it, hit me, hit me up, I'll live in it anytime. I mean, cameraman and tease man would live in there very happily. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, give us a comment below, a big fat like and a subscribe. And to remember, like always, click that big bell. Ding!